Welcome back. Today's topic is the overview of a special purpose vehicle. Let's get started. Do you know what a special purpose vehicle is? Well, a special purpose vehicle, also known as special purpose entity, or a special project vehicle called differently in different countries, is nothing but a legal entity that is formed by its parent company or sponsor company for a specific purpose. When this specific purpose gets accomplished, the special purpose vehicle is dissolved by the parent or sponsor company. Hence, a special purpose entity has limited rights, with respect to, what might be required to attain that purpose and its life is destined to end when the purpose is attained. The purpose for creation of special purpose vehicle is usually to undertake a very risky project to protect the parent company and its reputation. Special purpose vehicles are also created to securitize assets in a separate entity that is often kept as off the balance sheet item in the financials of the parent company. When the transactions winds up, the special purpose vehicle will sell its assets to redeem the outstanding securities, repaying investors and lenders. You must also know that since special purpose vehicle is a separate legal entity, their officers or controllers are often different from that of the parent company. So to summarize, 1. The special purpose vehicle is formed only for a specific purpose. 2. The special purpose vehicle is a distinct legal entity separate from its parent and is an off-balance sheet item for its parent. 3. The special purpose vehicle protects its parents from dissolution. 4. If the special purpose vehicle is used for securitization, the parent separates its assets into a different legal entity. Since now we understood the definition, let us understand the legal entity forms to create a special purpose vehicle. The legal entity forms of a special purpose vehicle can be, 1 a corporation, 2 a trust, 3 a limited partnership, 4 a limited liability company. Depending on the ease of creation, the parent may opt for any of the above structures. Moving forward, let us learn some of the salient features of a special purpose vehicle. Well, the salient features of special purpose vehicles are 1. Special purpose vehicles are bankruptcy remote companies. Meaning, there is no impact on the parent company if the special purpose vehicle goes bankrupt or vice versa. 2. Special purpose vehicle distances itself from the sponsor, both in terms of management and ownership. This is because, if the special purpose vehicle were to be owned or controlled by the sponsor, there will be no difference between a subsidiary and a special purpose vehicle. 3. After its formation the special purpose vehicle becomes an indirect source of financing for its parent or sponsor. 4. Special Purpose Vehicles protects its investors from negative financial impact of its parent or sponsor, as it is legally protected and is a separate entity from its parent or sponsor. 5. In the context of raising capital, the Special Purpose Vehicle usually is structured as limited liability company, where all investors of a given investment are pooled together into a single entity. 6. The actions of the special purpose vehicles are usually very tightly controlled and they are only allowed to finance, buy, and sell assets. 7. The advantage of special purpose vehicles is that they can be created with very low costs. 8. You can hold multiple properties under one special purpose vehicle. 9. Special purpose vehicles are created for limited operations such as acquire and finance specific property or assets. 10. A special purpose vehicle can be intended to even promote trade as an alternative to direct dealings. 11. Special purpose vehicles are used to securitize loans. Moving ahead, let us understand some of the abuses associated to special purpose vehicles. 1. Special purpose vehicles can be used as tools in order to hide losses and fabricate earnings. 2. Too much of securitization lead to the housing bubble which ultimately lead to global recession. Three special purpose vehicles can be used to manage regulatory requirements. For example to meet Basel II Tier 1 capital ratio requirement. Four the exact exposure levels of financial institutions are hidden behind their special purpose vehicles. Going ahead, there are several purposes for which special purpose vehicles are created. Some of the purposes can be 1. Securitization of loans or receivables. 2. In order to own one asset by multiple parties. 
3. Creating the special purpose vehicle not only allows the corporation to legally isolate the risks of any risky projects but also, share this risk with investors of such projects. 4. Some types of assets can be hard to transfer. Hence, a sponsor entity may create the special purpose vehicle to own these assets. After owning the assets, it then transfers these assets by simply selling the whole special purpose vehicle as part of a mergers and acquisitions process. 5. Some of the jurisdiction allows saving huge corporate taxes. Hence, the sponsor entity to save tax, transfers its assets in those tax heaven jurisdictions. 6. As discussed previously, if the special purpose vehicle is loss making, the balance sheet of the sponsor entity is unaffected. 7. The special purpose entity can raise funds from the market. 8. The special purpose vehicle is created to finance a project, for example a large venture or infrastructure project. 9. A regulatory standard that applies to special purpose vehicles assets is not the same as to the parent company's assets on balance sheet. 10. Put several assets such as real assets under one entity. Moving forward let us now understand the downsides of special purpose vehicles. The downsides of special purpose vehicles are, 1. Transfer of existing properties into a special purpose vehicle could be liable to stamp duty, legal costs, higher rate tax brackets and capital gains tax. 2. Special purpose vehicles may not have equal access to capital or access to the same rates given that these structures do not have the same credit profile as that of the parent. 3. Market-to-market -market accounting rules may be triggered if an asset is sold. 4. It is also possible that the regulatory environment could shift, creating significant new challenges for companies using these structures. 5. Negative public sentiment towards these structures is another potential risk. 6. Investor loses its direct connect with the sponsor or parent. The investor will instead rely on the person or entity in charge of managing the special purpose vehicle to relay updates and information. Let's move on to understand the tax implications of an special purpose vehicle. Special purpose vehicles are usually structured to be tax neutral, that is, their profits are not taxed. The failure to achieve tax neutrality would usually result in taxes being imposed once on the income of the sponsor and once again on the distributions from the special purpose vehicle. This double tax would most likely make special purpose vehicles unprofitable for the sponsor. Hence, there are a number of ways to design a special purpose vehicle to achieve tax neutrality. One of the best way is special purpose vehicles are incorporated in a tax haven jurisdiction, where they are treated as exempted companies. An exempted company is not permitted to conduct business and in return is awarded a total tax holiday for few years, example, in tax heaven Cayman tax holiday is for 20 years, with the possibility of a 10-year extension. Let us assume that the sponsor is from US and created a special purpose vehicle in Cayman, because such entities are not organized or created in the United States, they are not subject to U.S. federal income tax, except to the extent that their income arises from doing business in the United States. However, the organizational documents for the special purpose vehicle can limit it so that for purposes of the U.S. Internal Revenue Code of 1986, it can be construed as not being engaged in U.S. trade or business. Another example of a special purpose vehicle is an investment trust that issues pass-through certificates is tax-neutral, that is, the trust is ignored for tax purposes or there is no taxation at the trust level and the certificate owners are subject to tax. Let us now understand the complete process of securitization with respect to special purpose vehicles. Securitization is conversion of a loan book of a financial institution into marketable securities. The process goes like this. The financial institution transfers or sells the loan portfolio to the special purpose vehicle. Special purpose vehicle with the help of investment banker, converts the loans to bonds and sells the same to the investors. The special purpose vehicle transfers this amount to the sponsor, so that the sponsor can close its loan book. Investors get coupons for the purchase of bonds which actually flows from the EMI payments paid by the loan holders who are the customers of the financial institution. The investment banker also helps the special purpose vehicle to get each of the bonds rated. 
you may note that any asset type like mortgages, receivables, royalties, rentals, that produces income can be securitized. Now, let us understand the actors in securitization process. The first actor in a securitization process is the sponsor also called the originator or the promoter or the parent. The sponsor is that financial institution which has got asset comprising of a variety of loans and receivables like residential mortgage, commercial mortgage, car loans, students loans, lease receivables, higher purchase receivables etc., and wishes to pool its above assets type for securitization. The main reason for securitization is that it allows the lender financial institution to remove the associated assets from its balance sheets. With less liability on their balance sheets, they can underwrite additional loans. The second actor in the securitization process is co-sponsors. Here, you may note that all securitization processes will not have co-sponsors. Sometimes one or more legal entities are involved in the type of loans being securitized. Hence, these entities also participate actively during securitization process and tie up with the main sponsor for creation of special purpose vehicle. These legal entities are called co-sponsors. The third actor in the securitization process is the arranger or investment bank. The sponsor usually do not directly do the securitization as they are not experts in this field. Hence, they approach investment banks to seek help. Investment banks are active in tax havens and such jurisdictions where the sponsor wishes to create special purpose vehicle. With its connect to trust and company service providers, they create the special purpose vehicle for the sponsor. They also, underwrite the risk and in future also help sponsors to sell the securities to the relevant investors. The investment bank also help the sponsor to structure the securities. Example picks up and pool assets of similar nature considering factors such as maturities and interest rates. The fourth actor is the special purpose vehicle itself. The investment banks initiate transfer or sale of assets from sponsor to the special purpose vehicles using binding agreements. The sponsor if is knowledgeable enough can do this itself. After the transfer of assets to the special purpose vehicle, the special purpose vehicle with the help of investment bank converts these assets to saleable bonds. The investment bank helps the special purpose vehicle to synchronize the bonds with the maturity of the securitized loans or receivables. There are certain fancy names which are associated with these bonds such as pass-through certificate, pay-through certificate, interest-only certificate, principal-only certificate and etc. The fifth actor in the securitization process is the investor. Generally investment banks with its connection helps sponsor sell these bonds to its own investor base mostly a cluster of entities that have funds with them to invest. For example, insurance companies, other banks, hedge or private equity funds etc. The coupons or the interests of the investments are paid from the receivables of the assets. Example. If the assets are mortgage loans the monthly installments paid by the mortgage holder is paid as coupons to the investor. The sixth actor in the securitization process is the credit rating agency. The bonds have to be publicly issued. Hence, they require credit rating by a good credit rating agency so that they become more attractive and easily acceptable. Hence, these bonds are rated at least by one credit rating agency at the end of process of securitization. The issues could also be guaranteed by external guarantor institutions like merchant bankers which would enhance the credit worthiness of the certificates and would be readily acceptable to investors. Of course this rating guarantee provides to the investor with regard to the timely payment of principal and interest by the special purpose vehicle. The above actors are the main actors in the securitization process. But there are other roles mostly taken care by the arranger or the investment bank itself. They are 1. Liquidity providers. Liquidity providers are usually banks which provide the special purpose vehicle with necessary cash to avoid any unsteadiness of the cash flow to the investors. 2. Tax and accounting advisors. These professional structures transactions in such a way to allow minimizing the tax impact on the securities issued. 3. Auditors. In tax havens such as Cayman Islands, Luxembourg, the annual accounts of securitization vehicles have to be audited by one or more independent auditors. 
for legal advisors, as the legal structure and legal opinions are crucial to securitization, considerable legal work goes into documentation would involve numerous documents such as sale and purchase agreements, offering documents, etc. 5. Paying agent, the paying agent is the bank that has agreed to settle the payments on the securities issued to investors. Payments are usually made via a clearing system. 6. Custodian, the custodian bank is responsible for the safekeeping of securities. 7. Asset managers, asset managers are responsible for selecting underlying assets, monitoring the portfolio and, if foreseen, replacing underlying assets. They are common in CDOs or structured credit transactions. 8. Credit rating agencies, these are agencies who give ratings to the bonds. To summarize, the actors of the securitization process are 1. Sponsors or co-sponsors who create the special purpose vehicle. 2. The arrangers or the investment banks who arrange for the securitization process. 3. The special purpose vehicle itself. 4. The investors who invest in the special purpose vehicles and 5. The credit rating agencies who rate the bonds issued by the special purpose vehicles. Since, we already understood the process of securitization, it is easy for us now to understand the mortgage-backed securities. In the securitization process if the underlying assets are mortgages, they are called mortgage-backed securities. If in the above process of securitization, the type of loan being securitized if is residential mortgage then it is called residential mortgage-backed securities, if is commercial mortgage then it is called commercial mortgage-backed securities. If the individual loans such as auto loans, credit card debt, mortgages, corporate debt etc. are bundled or repackaged into securities and sold to investors, such complex structured financial products are called, collateralized debt obligations or a CDO. They are called collateralized because the promised repayments of the loans are the collateral that gives the collateralized debt obligations their value. Lastly, a collateralized loan obligation is a type of structured credit. To purchase the portfolio of loans, the CLO raises money by selling debt and equity securities. The debt and equity securities are sold in tranches, where each CLO tranche has a different priority of claim on cash flow distributions and exposure to risk of loss from the underlying collateral pool. Cash flow distributions begin with the senior most debt tranches of the CLO capital structure and flow down to the bottom equity tranche, a distribution methodology that is referred to as a waterfall. The most senior and highest rated AAA tranche has the lowest yield, but enjoys the highest claim on the cash flow distributions and is the most loss remote. Similarly, the mezzanine tranche which is a small layer positioned between the senior tranche, mostly AAA, and a junior tranche or unrated, typically called equity tranche, pay higher coupons but are more exposed to loss and have lower ratings. To summarize, securitization products such as RMBS, CMBS, CDOs and CLOs all rely on the underlying loans to receive payments paid by the borrowers of the financial institution. Moving ahead, let us understand Qualifying Special Purpose Vehicle, or simply, QSPV. A Qualifying Special Purpose Vehicle is an special purpose vehicle that meets the requirements set forth in Financial Accounting Standards, FAS 140. To be a Qualifying Special Purpose Vehicle means that, the SPV is demonstrably distinct from the sponsor, the SPV is significantly limited in its permitted activities, and these activities are entirely specified by the legal documents defining its existence, the SPV holds only passive receivables that is, there are no decisions to be made, and has the right, if any, to sell or otherwise dispose of non-cash receivables only in automatic response to the occurrence of certain events. The term demonstrably distinct, means that the sponsor cannot have the ability to unilaterally dissolve the special purpose vehicle, and that at least 10% of the fair value, of its beneficial interests, must be held by unrelated third parties. Now, let us see the challenges during customer due diligence of special purpose vehicles. The challenges during customer due diligence of special purpose vehicles are, one special purpose vehicles are not operational and may not have any employees. 
2. They may not have management structures. 3. They may not have individuals identified as a chief executive officer, president, or general manager, making it difficult to identify a single individual who would meet the controller's definition. 4. A special purpose vehicle can be owned by its sponsor or investors or, interestingly, no one. Hence, identifying individual beneficial owners under the ownership can be a challenge. 5. Some special purpose vehicles are established as so-called orphan trusts. The sole shareholder is a trust controlled by a corporate trustee. In this situation, no single individual can be identified as a beneficial owner. Going forward, let us now understand how a special purpose vehicle is incorporated. The way the special purpose vehicle is incorporated is as given below, one no governmental approval is required for the incorporation of the special purpose vehicle, nor is there any requirement to publicize an intention to incorporate. Special purpose vehicle is generally incorporated with limited liability. Two special purpose vehicle can generally be completed within 24 hours by delivery of two signed copies of the Memorandum of Association and Articles of Association to the Registrar of Companies. Three special purpose vehicles have unrestricted powers and is capable of exercising all the functions of a natural person, irrespective of corporate benefit. For the incorporation of special purpose vehicle requires minimum one director and there are no residency requirements for directors. The directors of the special purpose vehicle are responsible for the conduct of its day-to-day -day business and management. Five and special purpose vehicle must have at least one shareholder. Example, for the standard securitization special purpose vehicle the shareholder will be the trustee of a Cayman Star Trust. Six there is no minimum authorized or issued share capital for an special purpose vehicle. Fractional shares and shares of no PAR value may be issued. Shares may be issued fully, partly, or nil paid. 7. And special purpose vehicle can transfer its shares if the transfer is expressly or impliedly permitted by the company's articles of association. 8. Generally, there is no requirement that an special purpose vehicle appoint an auditor or file financial statements with the registrar of companies or any other governmental authority. But, and special purpose vehicle must keep proper records of account with respect to all transactions as necessary to give a true and fair view of the state of the company's affairs and explanation of its transactions. 9. And special purpose vehicle is required to pay a fee in jurisdiction of its birth at the time of its incorporation and each year thereafter. 10. Generally no taxes are imposed in jurisdictions like Cayman upon an special purpose vehicle or its shareholders. 11. Stamp duty applies in most of the jurisdictions. Moving ahead, there are certain core due diligence information that a KYC officer must collect for special purpose vehicles. They are, 1. Identification of legal structure of special purpose vehicle. Special purpose vehicles are required to be recognized as corporations, LLCs, LPs, or trusts in order to apply the specific CDD requirements under that legal entity. 2. Identification of sponsor and co-sponsor. The first step of CDD of special purpose vehicle is to identify who has or have transferred the assets to the special purpose vehicle or formed special purpose vehicle for specific purpose. 3. Identification of depositor, where, the assets which are often acquired from multiple originators, the role of depositor comes into picture. Depositor is also a bankruptcy remote special purpose vehicle or entity that acts as a central repository for the collection and pooling of the assets to be securitized and transferring the same to the issuer or the special purpose vehicle created for issue of bonds. For identification of servicer, obligers are those who have taken the loan from the financial institutions and hence, owe the financial institution for payments on the underlying loans. As obligers are often not informed about the sale of their payment obligation, the originator, in many cases, maintains the customer relationship as servicer. The servicer is the entity that collects principal and interest payments from obligers. However, in some cases even specialized servicers tend to carry out the role of servicer for a fee. Hence, the details of the servicer needs to be collected during CDD of the special purpose vehicle. 5. Identification of arranger, 
arrangers are mostly the investment banks who structure the bonds for the sponsors including designing of tranches of assets backed bonds. 6. Identification of underwriters, the role of underwriters in structured finance or securitization process, is raise funds for the special purpose vehicle by analyzing investor demand. Underwriters buy at a discount a specified amount of the offer of asset-backed bonds before reselling it to investors. In addition to marketing and selling these securities, underwriters also provide liquidity support in the secondary trading market. In most of the cases, the underwriter is the arranger itself. 7. Identification of issuer Issuer is the special purpose vehicle itself who issues the bonds in market. 8. Ownership and controlling parties a special purpose vehicle ownership details and controller details are identified in the agreements or documents of legal status of that special purpose vehicle. For example, if the special purpose vehicle is trust, the trust deed, if the special purpose vehicle is corporate, the memorandum of association or articles of association, if the special purpose vehicle is a LLC, the LLC agreement, if the special purpose vehicle is in the form of limited partnership, the LP agreements will have the details of owners and controllers. The same can be also collected through a structured charts and record of directors available with the client directly. 9. The authorized signers, the signatory details have immense importance for special purpose vehicles as this entity type involve in the maximum number of transactions in cash and checks then wires. This is collected from client directly mostly through board resolutions. 10. The annual reports or financials of the SPV especially for the information of assets and revenue of the SPV. To summarize, it is important to look at special purpose vehicle from all angles, there can be hidden informations which should be probed properly. Going ahead, let us see learn the challenges to the sponsor with respect to special purpose vehicles. 1. The very poor performance of an SPV can damage the repute of the sponsor. 2. Lack of control of the sponsor over the SPV defeat the purpose of creating one. 3. The common investors of the SPV and the sponsor if are upset with the SPV's performance, can do a great damage to the sponsor too. 4. The rates at which the SPVs may get debt are much costlier than that of the SPVs. 5. Regulatory standards are not applicable to the SPVs as its sponsor, hence, the conduct of businesses gets varied. Going ahead, special purpose vehicles, as we are aware by now takes the shape of a trust, a corporate, an LP, or an LLC. The special purpose vehicles take the shape of a limited partnership if it is a fund that should be managed offshore with its general partner incorporated onshore. Example, a fund which is incorporated in Cayman Islands with a general partner incorporated say in Delaware, US. This arrangement is popular for tax exemption purposes and to lure mainly U.S. investors who are tax exempt and foreign investors, who do not wish to invest in U.S. directly. In this scenario, the KYC officer should collect the following, one limited partnership agreements between the general partner, let's say, the U.S. general partner as explained above, and the limited partners who are investors in the fund. 2. The complete drill down details of a general partner. The general partners can be in the form of mostly, an LLC and sometimes corporate or an LP. The further drill down documents of GP, and its formation documents, should be collected by the KYC officer. 3. If it is initial onboarding, the details of seed investors, the investors, who form the fund and put their contributions for the formation, are required to be collected. However, during periodic reviews, complete details of investors are required to be known by the KYC officer. KYC officer can utilize the internal database such as say Investoron or get the details directly from the fund manager or representative of the client applicable. The special purpose vehicles take the shape of a trust for main two purposes as given below. 1. To transfer the assets and secure it. For example, a wealthy US individual transferring his slash her assets to say, a Cayman formed trust. Or, 2. An offshore trust formed by mostly, a fund manager to allow foreign investors to invest onshore and get benefited with huge taxes levied onshore if invests directly. In this scenario, 
the KYC officer should be careful as trustees will be from offshore and mostly the employees of a trust company service providers with nominee beneficial owners. The KYC officer should make all possible efforts to find the main UBOs who are behind these trust structure. The documents to be collected are the trust deed, the formation documents of trust, the details of the trustees with their identification proof and address proof and the details of nominee beneficial owners and if possible, the main beneficial owners. The SPV in the form of LLC or corporates are generally formed for securitization purposes, or maintenance of assets such as real estate or projects say building of an airport or shipyard. The KYC officer has to collect the general documents of a corporate such as Certificate of Incorporation, MOA, and AOA and details of beneficial owners and ultimate beneficial owners. In case of LLC, the formation document, the operating agreement, the articles of incorporation and members running the LLC. Finally, let us see the money laundering risks of the special purpose vehicles. One because of their normally off-balance sheet, Bankruptcy remote and private nature special purpose vehicles can be used for illegitimate purposes. Two special purpose vehicles are used for concealment of losses. Three special purpose vehicles held by criminals can be used for money transfers, disguising these transactions as legal business transactions. Four special purpose vehicles can be used for bettings or auctions to purchase something with illegal money. Five complex structured products can be created using special purpose vehicles such as CDOs or CLOs. Six accounting irregularities can be used by criminals using a special purpose vehicle. Seven criminals can get accesses to payable through accounts using special purpose vehicle structures to clear checks and conduct wires. Eight criminals can structure money using special purpose vehicles. Nine criminals use special purpose vehicle structure to evade tax. 10 criminal companies can easily open accounts in international banks by sponsoring a special purpose vehicle for doing transactions. That's all for today, thank you. Hope you all now have a fair idea about the special purpose vehicle. And you may now apply this knowledge to your day-to-day -day work. Have a nice day ahead. Stay tuned.